throwing y'all right into the thick of it, the sights and sounds of NASCAR Xfinity Series practice and qualifying. We're here at Pocono Raceway up and down pit road. It is packed here. I've never seen this many people pressed onto the grid for a qualifying session that isn't even the Cup Series. It probably helps that there's a truck race happening today in addition to the Xfinity race. So despite no Cup Series doubleheader weekend this year, at least you have a lot of racing action packed into one fun weekend. This is my first trip ever out to Pocono Raceway, and so far I'm blown away. It is truly as picturesque as everyone promised it would be. I'm here doing some content with JD Motorsports and Alka Seltzer. We've got a meetup coming up shortly. We've actually got our own out of the groove setup down in the uh, infield fan zone. I can't wait to show it to y'all. We'll get there in a moment, but first we gotta go check in on Bailey and see how qualifying's about to play out. What goes through a driver's head before you launch yourself into turn one here at Pocono? Uh, really just a bunch of things. Uh, here at Pocono, you gotta keep an eye on the water temperature and things like that. Uh, with the resin, you gotta think about where you're gonna run the resin. I'm trying to see if anybody else is getting up there in it. In practice, it was working out all right, but I think we'll be on the line uh, both ends here. But, uh, yeah. Same old deal every week, you know, get out, go run as fast as you can and hope it sticks. Really getting buckled up now. Just a few cars to go until, until it's his turn. Green flag for Bailey's qualifying lap. Oh my gosh. You even see him, just a little speck. This front straightaway is huge. 14th quick it looks like. We'll see how that holds up. Maybe a top 20 starting spot, probably top 25, at least not too bad. Jeff here uh, just tossed over this fence to me a uh, Bayer Buckshot Jones die cast. Well, asked me to sign it. Uh, I'm no Buckshot Jones, but this is pretty cool. We're doing the Alka Seltzer thing with Bailey Curry. This is awesome. Thanks I for watching. Might as well, yeah. <laughs> Great timing. Great theming. Qualifying's winding down. It's almost 11 a.m. And I want to go show you guys that uh, epic out of the groove setup I was hyping up earlier. Out of the groove has jumped out of your computer screens and into real life. A real, physical, tangible out of the groove giveaway tent. Sponsors have got giveaway goodie bags full of uh, sweet sponsor swag to give out to fans. And of course, I want to thank Alka-Seltzer next door here for giving us some space to work with this week, giving us a spot to set up. This is so, so cool. Uh, we've had this tent at a few races now, even like last year at Charlotte, I think is where it debuted. But now we've got that official out of the groove branding. Tons of fun stuff to give away. It's really great to have kind of like a, a home base, like a hub here at the racetrack. We're not gonna bring this to every racetrack, of course, but hopefully a few times a year, hopefully you'll see it again this year, obviously finalizing exact schedule and plans. But having this tent, it's like a waypoint. It's a great chance to do meetups and stuff, scheduled uh, you know, appearances. I was just talking to some people. The one thing it's missing is t-shirts. I gotta get some like out of the groove hats. Gotta get more hats made, some shirts made, some actual out of the groove stuff to give out to you guys. But you know, room to grow. This is a uh, step one and I'm pretty happy with how it looks. Ever since I was a kid, I'd love to have like my own setup, my own presence at a racetrack where inside, uh, the campground sort of or near the the like fans zone. Uh, I don't know where we are But they've got a big stage set up over there for like I don't know concerts or track fight I don't know what's going on. You got the bush beer like little portable mobile bar Set up so we're in a pretty busy area as you can see it's still early on a Saturday and there's a lot of people Riding and scooting around Billy here uh, best shirt of the day Got the Ghost NASCAR crossover t-shirt. What's this you're just showing up? I see, oh, you are dedicated. <laughs> it's a great way to meet fans, talk about the track, the history. This is just so cool. I'm super stoked that uh, this is able to happen. And it again, wouldn't be possible this weekend without the help of Alka Sensor, AE Engine, NASCAR Pole Position Magazine. Hopefully this allows us to do some more great stuff at the track in the future. We'll be doing a more like dedicated meetup tomorrow. I'm excited to see how that goes. We sort of experimented with one at Darlington a few weeks ago and it went really, really well. So hopefully we can go two for two. While I'm here, might as well check out some of these cool uh, third party vendor tents. Gosh, if you need an old 164 scale die cast, You've come to the right place. Oh, I've never seen this. They have a Dale Earnhardt branded like model railroad. Look at this, the Intimidator on a train car. This is actually kind of insane. <laughs> Casey Kane? Uh, I mean, like, I guess I see it. The resemblance, uncanny. Gosh, Tony Stewart could use a napkin. I like these like signs. They all have uh, the next gen paint scheme. Well, all but this one. But that's Daytona 500 champ. That that's timeless. This is the live, laugh, love of NASCAR merch. Remember a couple years ago there were rumors Disney would buy NASCAR. I think even Jeff Gordon name dropped them like almost like as a wishful 
hopeful thing. Oh, dang, I miss these large plastic die casts. I think they only made them for like the 2014 season. I had a Dollar General run for Matt Kenseth, and it was just like, just throw it around, just toss it against the wall. It was indestructible. Good time to be doing this exploring. It's still early on a Saturday. The crowds will fill in tomorrow, but there is a truck race getting ready to start. Gotta go catch a glimpse of that at least. In other major sports, they'll retire your number, they'll hang a banner from the roof, they'll make you a plaque, but here at Pocono, they'll give you a rock. They'll give you a, your own dedicated rock. Sign me up, I like that. I don't know if it comes through on the camera, but the black and the gold, very shiny. It's quiet right now. Here's a look at Pocono Raceway, Victory Lane, I'm sorry, the Richard Petty Victory, sorry, Richard Petty 200 Victory Circle. Yeah. Todd Bodine has a bunch of guests here. All their shirts say, The Onion's Last Ride. Ross Chastain stopping by. Even Ross has one of the shirts. That's commitment. <laughs> Okay, we got here a little late after the anthem and everything, so we gotta head off the grid ASAP, but trucks now, stay tuned because we've still got some Xfinity Series racing and content on deck. the festivities. Tricky the Fox doing some default video game animations on a loop. Truck Series race is over. Chandler Smith gets the win. The Truck Series regular season is over as well. I'm kind of distracted by this uh, Pocono show car, this Gen 6 Chevy SS body. I'm not exactly sure what to do next. We have a couple hours actually until the Xfinity race starts. There's some Cup Series on track action in between. You can actually hear them warming up some of the engines in the garage over there. I, I don't know, we're just gonna I'll walk around, <laughs> see where the afternoon takes us. Fans are all lined up here near the media center. Drivers are expected to go in, do their required media availability in, I don't know, about 15 or 20 minutes. Maybe we'll stop by there. But uh, before we go in, you can hear the engines revving. Let's check out some of the cars. I haven't actually looked at any of the Cup Series cars yet this weekend. That's right, it's Kurt Busch in the uh, McDonald's car this week. Lots of the cars are tucked away sleeping, but Alex Bowman's white 48 ally scheme always out. Logano's got a red Verizon scheme this week. You know, I thought we'd be able to see some of these cars, but they're all tucked into their garage. Last week, Truex was in the Interstate Batteries colors. He's back in the DeWalt yellow. Just keeps mixing it up. Okay, yeah, sorry. I thought we'd get a better view of some of the cars, but I guess I was a little too late. I always love watching what fans bring into the garage. Like, this is, did he just get that off of like the 17? I don't think so. Where did he get this? How did he get this in here? I'm just wandering around right now. I didn't realize there was a more than three hour gap between the end of the truck race and the beginning of the Xfinity race. I know they're squeezing Cup Series practice and qualifying in there, but goodness, there's it's a long afternoon. Chase Elliott trying desperately to get to his car. <laughs> Practice about to begin, Bubba Wallace looking on. Cut practice is going on, but I wanted to show you here in the Xfinity garage, uh, they got all of the cars covered up here. Their race is still a couple hours away. Truck haulers leaving while a uh, cup qualifying, I believe is still going on, still wrapping up. But these uh, trucks, they got a long hike. Back on down to Charlotte. Drivers heading back to the media center, heading back to their haulers. Cup Series qualifying just wrapped up, so the Xfinity race is on deck. We're gonna go check out the uh, JD Motorsports guys, see what's going on at the hauler. Pretty soon, car covers should be coming off and they should be pushing that four car out to the grid. Also, my lens is so dirty, I clean it, I swear, and yet somehow out here in amongst all the elements, Little specks of dirt get in there. I can't, I don't know what to do. In the Xfinity garage, all the Xfinity cars are lined up, ready to be pushed to the grid. Check out this Alka-Seltzer scheme. You guys met in one of my recent episodes, Christopher Darling, 
the gentleman who designed this car, and it's, he did a bang up job. The inclusion of the Alka-Seltzer tablet there with the four on it, this looks great. Man, they've even got all this Alka-Seltzer branding out here by the haulers in the back of the Xfinity garage. A lot of team members, crew members, sponsors hanging around. It's always cool to do these kinds of videos with teams. I know I did doing this with JD Motorsports. I didn't film it, but I was with JD Motorsports for the whole Ghost deal at Phoenix earlier this year. Done some stuff with Jordan Anderson racing in the past. It's really cool because Alka-Seltzer really got introduced to NASCAR through NASCAR Pole Position Magazine and my show Out of the Groove. And so to see them now expanding their reach into the sport, sponsoring a race team for multiple races this year like it's cool personally to feel like I was you know a small part of that they're about to start pushing the cars towards the grid the green flag is only about an hour away can't wait drivers making their way towards the intro stage I keep forgetting Ricky Stenhouse is in this race in the 48 ah, here we go I found where they put Bailey's car making sure everything is set and secure pretty cool to see teams like this go all out to uh, entertain a major sponsor matching uniforms the full race day experience this is what NASCAR needs more of. Bubba Wallace talking to Raja Karuth before he runs today's uh, Xfinity race. Pretty cool to see Raja making a few starts this year in uh, Tommy Joe Martin, Alpha Primes, 44. Opening ceremonies complete. Time for 80, 90 laps? How many laps is this race? I don't actually know. 225 miles, very specific. Dang, they've even got the branded pit box. Wow, pulling out all the stops. pretty much the entire truck race from down on pit road i want to see some of this race from the grandstand so there's a tunnel over here behind the victory circle or richard petty's winter circle whatever it's called whoa this is pretty cool this feels like one of those indoor storage places <laughs> uh, now we got to go up some stairs and i'll get my first look at uh, the grandstands i'm excited for this panoramic view i've been promised oh uh, okay looks like just about any other racetrack <laughs> down under the stands let's go check out this view Gosh, this front straightaway is no joke. So wide, but so very long. I could probably scoot up a few more rows. We can see a lot of people for the Xfinity race sitting up as high as they can so they get the clearest view of the tunnel turn way on the other side. It's like a mile away. And I can see everything pretty well from here. Restart. You can kind of see them there on the back straightaway, like a bunch of ants heading towards the tunnel turn. Whoa, Alfredo goes wide. I'll kind of lose the view here if I screwed up a little higher to maybe see over the campgrounds. Did someone say turn four? What turn four? It's no Bristol, but it does have its own charm. I can't wait to see this place uh, almost fully packed tomorrow for the cup race. Thumbs up. Safety crews with a pretty quick response time getting over to uh, Jeb Burton here. Slowly flipping him over pretty quick. Uh, so far, it seems like a little quicker than when Chris Buescher flipped at Charlotte. I know that's a different car. This is a Xfinity car, but so far, so good. They know what a great job is being done by the safety crew. Jeb Burton should be able to climb out under his own power. Nice. Well done. I just didn't win it, and that's the only thing I did. I, you know, it's it's hard to race for maturity and, and race for wins and championships. So, you know, it's just it's a fine balance. But you know, I just didn't win it, and it's, it comes down to that. Fun stuff, awesome racing, great finish. Ton of respect for both Noah Gregson and Ty Gibbs, not just for their driving ability, put on a great, great show on the very 
fine edge of control, but especially Ty, not getting over aggressive, not overstepping, not plowing through the nine car. He had plenty of options, opportunities, never did. So gain some respect for me, Gregson versus Gibbs. Gonna be a great rivalry going forward. That's it for Saturday. We'll be back here bright and early tomorrow, Sunday, Cup Series race day. We got a meetup plan. Obviously the Cup race is gonna be exciting. Only six races to go until the playoffs. So uh, consider this halftime. I'll see you guys literally like after this commercial break. Good morning once again from beautiful Pocono Raceway. It's M&M's Fan Appreciation 400 Day. M&M's has been in the sport for a while now and they are going out with a bang. Appreciate you guys sticking with me. I know yesterday was already a full video's worth of action. Xfinity, trucks. But today is the big day. A near sellout crowd is expected. The weather is beautiful. The merch haulers are out in full force. I do want to check out some of the new next gen die casts that apparently are being sold. Kyle Busch's primary M&M scheme. It's kind of hard to see some of the details through the glass. That's a 2021 right there, Gen 6 versus a uh, 2022 next gen. Some subtle differences you can see even from this not so perfect angle. I've seen many people comment on the new boxes. I don't know if every next gen comes packaged like this. It's it's really cool. You see the product, it's very visible, but it's maybe not the most efficient. Like I know in my closet, I have boxes and boxes, you know, stacked on top of each other. They're all perfect rectangles. That might be a little more difficult with these new boxes, but I did see a kid yesterday who took like the plastic coating off and it kind of sat nicely on a platform. It was perfect for Kyle Busch to sign as he was walking through the garage. So I don't know, maybe given some take, some good, some bad with the new packaging. It's not just Toyota that's got some next gens in stock. I love that mobile one car. That's a really good looking scheme. I wish he ran that more this year. Oh gosh, I'm kind of coming at this in reverse order, but look at this. DoorDash and McDonald's kind of collaborating on a, on a booth right here. Look, they got Bubba Wallace's car from last year. This is a Gen 6. Is this the scheme he won uh, Talladega with? I can't remember, it was a McDonald's car. I don't remember if this was if it was this exact scheme. Hey, I love the sesame seeds on the side skirts. That's a nice detail. I remember them doing this, I can't remember if it was Talladega a few years ago, but they're giving away French fries here at a McDonald's truck. Oh, never mind, they're also doing, they're doing little mini McFlurries. I got. I had to get the M&M's one since it's you know the M&M's race. We got a nice comfy couch here, a little bit of shade with just enough sun to melt this McFlurry a little. I can't remember the last time I had McDonald's McFlurry. Not since I was a kid. That's good. Normally I wouldn't eat ice cream before 10 a.m., but uh, today's a special occasion. Whoa! I've never seen a Rowdy Energy sampling booth or display before. Oh gosh, ice cream and energy drink before noon. This is gonna be a long day. I didn't know that was a, a new flavor. I gotta give that a try. Thank you, sir. Okay, I haven't, you know, I did like a taste test video years ago for when Rowdy Energy first came out. I've had it a few times since then. This might be my new favorite flavor. I'm a sucker for blue raspberry, blue flavored things in general. I really try to avoid energy drinks, but oh man, that's tasty. It almost feels like a little treat every now and again. Ty Dillon and Ross Chastain scheduled to appear here at the Chevy display. A lot of fans already gathered around. Scanner rentals still, they have purchases. You can purchase a scanner, but I think if you want to rent, you still have to pre-order that. That's something I think they started doing during the pandemic and it has not changed. It's kind of bubbles. Where are all these bubbles coming from? There are the bubbles. Whoa. Okay, now my camera's soaked. Why did I do that? Actually, you know what? Maybe that finally cleaned my camera lens a little bit. Uh, nope, nope, nope. Still some spots. Still, still some spots. What the heck? I just stumbled into a carnival. Man, Pocono has to have one of the most elaborate midway fan zone setups I've seen all year. Like probably like Daytona 500 maybe is the only one that comes close to comparing. There's a lot to do out here. Even Daytona didn't have rides. I thought these had been made illegal. No. Oh my gosh, that does not look like a good time. My head is spinning just watching this thing. Oh my God, why is it on its side? That looks so unnatural. Oh, you could not pay me enough money to ride this. I'm about to pull my own Noah Gregson. I'm not kidding, I thought for sure that was made illegal in like the 80s. Pretty cool demonstration of physics, but I will not be riding, no sir. They have a lot of these third party tents all around this track, inside the track, underneath the grandstands, and out here by the carnival. Wow, I'm a little surprised nobody scooped up this piece. Uh, they must be asking a lot for it. The Marines and the Air Force next door. Wow, the Air Force brought a hangar. Inside the hangar they have, what is this, like a VR 
fighter pilot experience? Or, or are they getting a massage? I, it's, whoa. The Air Force always knows how to make an impression. My, oh my, the stars are out. Frito-Lay has an inflatable Chester the Cheetah. Whoa. Hey, look, Ma, no hands. Doing some BMX tricks back there. I still th see that thing, like a top spinning on its side. I cannot get over the sheer number of these t-shirt tents. You know, some of them kind of off-brand, I don't know, not my taste by any means, but some, some look pretty cool. They got all these generic Pocono Racing t-shirts I keep seeing, I don't know, I guess that's something. Oh my gosh, there's a whole nother alleyway here I totally missed. General Tire has a massive tent. There was an ARCA race uh, on Friday. I love that they bring this show car pretty much everywhere they go. Looks nice. Just always good to see the uh, classic petty colors. Eye racing rig set up. I've noticed a lot of the booths I've checked out today have some sort of eye racing or arcade setup. Like it's just becoming really consistent, a, re a real staple. If you come to a race, you're gonna get an opportunity to make some virtual laps somewhere. Here's a few for the Show Car Hall of Fame. I especially love this like 2011 or Car of Tomorrow style body with the door number slid for it. And Denny's! Who doesn't love Denny's? That's a good one right there. Like, by good I mean bad, but that makes it good. I would be so disoriented back here if it wasn't for these big white spires up over the, the back of the main grandstands. That's sort of like my waypoint. Keeps me uh, orientated. Orientated? Oriented? Oriented. I'm like adding syllables where it doesn't need them, I think. Back where we started today, the blue M&M has a friend. Oh, he's kind of smirking at you. Uh, uh. Crowd starting to fill in a bit. It's still only like 10, 15, 10, 30. Race doesn't start until after three. I think I've seen just about everything out here, but I haven't found uh, the Toyota or Ford displays. Do they, not, do they not make the trip? I don't know. It's a beautiful day but might head into the track and check out some of uh, what there is to see underneath the grandstands. You know, check out concessions, merch, that kind of thing. And then I'm planning to do a, a sort of meetup inside the track once again at the out of the groove tent. Hoping for a good crowd. We're kind of located in the middle of the campgrounds and stuff, so we'll see, uh, we'll see what happens. I'm excited. Going in here through gate nine. Kind of interesting, you have to go through a little like garage to get to the main concourse here. What is this? What am I looking at? Okay, this is one of the most creative food or drink stands I've ever seen. This looks hilarious, but also really good at the same time. Wow. Here's all the food. Italian sausage, Tricky's trash can fries. That, that's very curious. Burgers, chicken tenders, what you'd expect. Underneath the main grandstands now, from what I've gathered, Pocono's interesting. It's really just this one long main grandstand across in front of the front stretch. And then it's the campgrounds all throughout the infield, the massive and sprawling infield. So pretty much all the activities and stores and booths and stuff are in one of two places. They're either out here, under grandstands or out in front of them, or they're out in that central fan zone area kind of by the campgrounds, which is where the out of the group tent is set up. Fans starting to file in here. Still over four hours until the green flag. Let's head into the track because I want to show you guys some of the infield experience. You know what, sorry, that's I think like Phoenix Raceway's trademark. Uh, but I do want to show you guys the infield down around that winner's victory circle thing. They've got some stuff set up. I want to check that out and show you guys. Now to get into the infield, you do need a pit pass of some sort. Or I guess if you're camped out in the infield, you can probably get there pretty easily. Uh, I'm not entirely sure but we are going in all right we're now inside the track I hear staying alive blasting on the speakers fans lined up along the fence trying to peek at the cars as they come through inspection got a bush light bar here next to the garage uh, some shady seats underneath a, a very randomly located tree that awesome show car from yesterday another Pocono Raceway merchandise store and what's this over here, these red trailers? It may be nothing, but they have giant antennas attached to them. Oh, I see. Verizon's uh, promoting their frontline response or something. They're on Logano's car this week. So I'm not sure, this may all just be for show, but uh, I was over here getting excited that maybe we were gonna have like super high speed fan Wi-Fi at a racetrack. I don't know if you can see it, but they do have a, a Verizon response Wi-Fi, but I don't think that's for public use. They do have a free Pocono fan Wi-Fi. I've not really tried that out this weekend, but might be okay. A big thing that needs to be improved pretty much across the board at NASCAR tracks is internet. 
need to build some more towers, some more antennas, do something, especially for these very remote racetracks to get the fans here the ability to post photos and send tweets and everything. Like that's how you really create a buzz from the place itself. When you have like 100,000 people somewhere, everyone's fighting for the same signal, it's tough to accomplish, but if they can make it happen, I think that'd be a huge difference maker. I'm here at the Pocono Fan Store, one of their big trailers. Just want to look at some of the stuff. This uh, wood Pocono Raceway sign here in front of us. I've seen a lot of fans using those to collect uh, a bunch of driver autographs all weekend. I love when tracks you know, sell something like this that looks good, hang on your wall, and leaves plenty of, plenty of space for signatures. The clock just struck 11 a.m. Lots of fans out in the uh, infield fan zone, but not a lot of activity in the Cup Series garage right now. I'm gonna go catch my breath for a few and then we're gonna head over to the out of the group tent for our noon meetup. All right, we are now located basically in the dead center of the triangle. There are the front stretch grandstands way over there. We're heading deeper into the center walk in kind of past some of the campgrounds towards the uh, infield fan zone. I noticed this yesterday, I meant to point out, but it's kind of cool they have a big screen set up that actually shows the race kind of right here in front of one of these main campsites. And I think there's one way over on the other side going towards turn one, so that, that's kind of cool. I also forgot to show you guys this yesterday, but they have a, a nice kind of racing Pocono themed playground here in the center of the track as well. All right, tents being packed up. That was pretty cool. You know, for me, when I come to a lot of these tracks, it's still either my first time or one of my first times visiting, so I'm still trying to figure out the lay of the land, understand where the fans are. And I know this location was a little off the beaten path, not out there on the main drag where we were this morning, but glad so many people were able to find it, were able to come by and say hi, take photos, talk a little racing, that kind of thing. I also just got some big news at the end of the meetup. Ty Gibbs is racing today. Kurt Busch, concussion, not cleared to race. Should have a playoff waiver, but Ty Gibbs is about to make his Cup Series debut. Today just got a lot more interesting. We're behind the gate now in the Cup Series garage. I was a little too slow getting over here. I know Ty Gibbs just addressed the media, and they just finished putting the rookie stripes on the back of the 45 car. The crew has been hard at work since yesterday, repairing the damage, fitting Ty Gibbs for a seat, attaching decals, now the car must have already been pushed to the grid. I'll have to go check that out in a minute. I do love that Trackhouse tries to spruce things up outside their hauler, the little plants, and the, uh, I don't know, big poster with their drivers. Very dramatic. Is he like wearing boxing gloves, like striking a pose? This is where we just walked from. I love the iconic shot of the fence with dozens and dozens of fans reaching their little hands and arms through to try and get an autograph from their favorite driver. So I assume the drivers must typically walk this way after the, you know, the driver's meeting or whatever it's called now, Club 1948. Oh wow, once you get out onto pit road, there are tons of fans packed in here behind these barriers. Crazy. Waiting for the drivers to emerge, but at least they have a nice view of some race cars. Cole Custer's silver Haas tooling Ford on display. I like the scheme and the colors on this 42. Of course, Petty GMS hit with a 35 point penalty, both 42 and the 43 cars. Harvick's back in the red. Ooh, SummerSlam on Corey LaJoy's number seven. Okay, I'm actually really happy to see this car up close. I never noticed, look at the like pattern on the on the body there, it's kind of matte. What is it supposed to be, like gravelly? It kind of looks like gravel. I know they have like the raptor claw like tear through it. I mean, that's kind of cool, I just, I don't know. It's better than that you know, Shrek green Exalta car he ran last year, but I'm just used to seeing a lot of colors on this car. I do like the, the kind of neon green accent there underneath the Chevy logo underneath the headlights, that's really cool. But the rest of the scheme, I just, I don't know. I will give it credit. You can't always see this detailed texture, this pattern on TV. So I'm glad I got to come up close and see it. Get maybe a little more appreciation for it. I, I do like the front end. The, the neon green highlights look really good. Tyler Reddick in a Sheets car. Again, I'm from Texas. Some of these local stores and brands I'm not familiar with, but if I'm not mistaken, isn't Wawa kind of a bigger thing over here? I know there's like a huge debate. Wawa versus Sheets. Uh, let me know in the comments below. What is this a controversial paint scheme or is this is this fair game? All right, this one right here, I don't know. I do love the red. I think the hood looks pretty good, but this just like Verizon checkmark V on the side. It's not enough for me. Like literally, this could be a great, just solid red scheme with the little stripe going along the top there. But can they spell out the word Verizon? Is there a reason, like because of Xfinity, they're not allowed to? Well, they could on the hood. They have Verizon right out on the hood. 
So, I, I don't know, I don't, that's my only critique of this one. I know you guys just love when I critique paint schemes. Last week's winner, Christopher Bell, and in front of him, Ty Gibbs, driving the 45 this weekend, making his first career Cup Series start. You can see the addition of the rookie yellow bumper stripes. They still have Kurt's name above the driver's side door and on the rear windshield, probably on the front windshield as well. Now, they did have to repair parts of this car. I think the hood was originally red. Now, because they had to get some replacement parts, it's black. So, I don't know, <laughs> it's, it's interesting. It was something about Ty Gibbs, always driving cars with a, a black hood and an M on it. I, I don't know, there's a lot of M's in NASCAR. Have you noticed that? This race is sponsored by M&M's. McDonald's here, used to seeing the Monster Energy M. There's a lot of M logos. I guess it's just something about M. Looks good. What is it with Martin Truex Jr. and running everyone else's paint scheme? Like, I love the DeWalt car, I love the Interstate Battery cars, but they're not really Truex's. Truex and Blaney looking for a win. They've got a lot of points, but in a modern NASCAR, wins trump everything. Some good looking Toyotas up front. Denny Hamlin on the pole, Kyle Busch starting second. M&M sponsoring this race. They brought the classic yellow out here to Pocono. Chase Elliott behind him. A lot of good looking. These are like, these front four schemes here, FedEx, M&Ms, Napa, and Hendrick. These are like probably the first four paint schemes I feel like I think of when I think of 2022 NASCAR. I don't know, they're all just so iconic. It's really a shame M&M's is leaving. And yes, I do consider that HendrickCars.com scheme iconic. I mean, Larson raced it for a full year and won the championship. It's, it's reached iconic status that quickly, in my opinion. I'm kind of a TV and film nerd, so I love looking at all the behind the scenes NBC stuff. They got Jeff and Dale, Burton and Earnhardt walking by. Pretty cool crane set up here at the front of the grid. Some fun behind the scenes for you. Jeff Burton and Dale Jr. walked over here with the NBC camera crew in front of Ty Gibbs and last week's winner, Christopher Bell. And Bell just came over and was hanging out over there getting a little briefing before I assume they go on the air and probably bring him in for an interview uh, early on in the pre-race show. That'd be my guess. Like I said, I like seeing kind of the behind the scenes, the logistics of making TV a live sporting event, a live broadcast happen. I think a lot of that stuff's super interesting. I know I'm critical often of Fox or NBC's coverage, but I like to understand a little more about how things work. Denny Hamlin stopping to take photos with some fans, sign some autographs. Chase Briscoe. You know, me and Briscoe had a conversation a few weeks ago about Club Penguin. I wish we got that on camera. These drivers are just like the rest of us. They also played Club Penguin. <laughs> Chris Busher making his way. There's a swarm around these drivers. There's a lot of people down here near the grid, on the grid. Like here, I want to walk over behind the driver intro stage. It looks packed. Corey LaJoy, Cody Ware, Joey Logano in the red fit this week. Tyler Reddick, Kyle Larson. Noah Gregson, Denny Hamlin, is that Stenhouse? Yeah, Stenhouse with his back to us. I like Austin Sindrick's hat. He looks comfortable. McDowell and Ty Dillon. Oh wow, I'd never seen them in the same room until now. Chase and Chase. Right there. Ty Gibbs and Denny Hamlin were just talking. Hamlin is uh, Gibbs' boss for the day, I guess. Pretty cool to take in this hectic atmosphere. Drivers are now on stage, getting ready to go out for driver intros. Is that Tricky the Fox? What's he doing in there? He's getting all hyped with all the drivers. What is this? How'd he get invited? What the? That's a big plane. All right, green flag, moments away. Very, very full grandstands here, especially near the, the flag stand. Not many spaces, like almost none. On down turns toward three and turn one. There are a few spaces, sure. Not quite a sellout, but close is what I've been told. Ty Gibbs lagging way back. May just ride around this first stage. He's never been in an X-Gen car. He's done sim work and that's it.
real, a real mix. Good amount of booze, a lot of cheers. Hey y'all, uh, Eric here, as always, filming my final thoughts days after the fact. So once uh, Hamlin crossed the checkered flag, I had to rush out and film a video. Then of course we had the crazy news that Hamlin and Kyle Busch had been disqualified. Chase Elliott was the winner, so crazy stuff. Filming this a couple days after the fact, we now know all the fallout from this Pocono race. You've probably seen all my videos on it. As for my first experience at Pocono, uh, I have a few honest thoughts. The atmosphere was incredible. That was apparently the largest crowd they've had at a race in like at least 10 or 12 years. So uh, the vibe was special. Lots of space, campgrounds were awesome. The fans, everyone I talked to, extremely pleasant. A lot of fans were from the Northeast area. Some fans I talked to were even from Canada. I was at least somewhat impressed by the quality of the facilities. Again, I knew there'd be a lot of space to spread out, but a lot of the buildings, pit road, grandstands, you know, better maintained than I would have thought. You know, I'll talk about some tracks like Bristol that I love could use some renovation. My only real issue with Pocono, and you know, I just commended it for being large and having all the space, but as a result, a lot of the sight lines are not great. Even if you sit up high, high in the grandstands, you, you can see all the way around, but they're gonna look like little specks in the distance. It's probably my only gripe with like Daytona or Talladega, but at least Daytona and Talladega, everyone's in a pack. You can kind of follow one herd around the, the facility. At Pocono, of course, the racing gets incredibly spread out, incredibly fast, and even if you're sitting high up on the front stretch grandstands, it's kind of hard to see the exit of turn three and see all the cars sail off into turn one. You have to like stand up and lean, and when it's packed, as it was Sunday afternoon, visibility is not great, because on the restarts, when they fan out five, six wide, you want to have a good view of it, and you just don't really get one. My only other issue is with the location. It's very remote, and granted, I didn't get a lot of time to explore many of the surrounding areas, but there's not a lot right there around the racetrack, and traffic, uh, pretty pretty awful, but I mean, I guess that's typical at most NASCAR tracks. That's not exclusive to Pocono. So overall, I had a great time. I definitely have a newfound appreciation for Pocono Raceway than I did before. I still won't put it up there as one of my favorite tracks, but it's certainly one that's worth a visit in person, especially if you live anywhere near the Northeast. I encourage you to go check it out, especially as long as they continue to have just one packed weekend a year, I think you can count on a pretty great turnout. And that creates a really awesome mood and I think enhances the experience in person. So uh, I had fun. I'll have to visit again sometime soon. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this longer form, more detailed vlog than I've done in a long, long time. But hope you guys enjoyed. I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.